12. The news at noon starts right now. New this noon, a murder suspect taken away in handcuffs after police found a 54 year old man shot multiple times. That person later died. Anthony Guzman is now charged with murder. Police said the trouble started back on May 27th. Officers were called to investigate a shooting in the 2900 block of Commercial Avenue. This is what a car wash not far from South Park Mall. Officers were able to track down Guzman on the southwest side just yesterday and they took him into custody. For a second time, a jury will decide if Mark Howerton is guilty of murder, and that decision could come at any minute. The jury is right now deliberating in the Mark Howerton retrial. That jury tasked with the goal of finding out if Howerton murdered his girlfriend, Kaylee Mendaddy. Erica Hernandez there for the closing arguments and joins us live from the Justice Center. Erica, considering this was a mistrial last time a jury went into deliberations, are we expecting this to take even longer? Ursula, there's no way of really knowing how long a jury will take. They could take minutes, they could take hours, they can take days. But what I know so far is that they have been deliberating for about 30 minutes now. But before they went back, they heard closing arguments. The state, in closing, reiterating to the jury the evidence they put showed the volatile relationship between Howerton and Mendati and on how and how on October 29, 2017, 2017, the two left the Malaluna Festival around 3.45 p.m. and then stopped at a parking lot off 281 north of downtown to, what, to have what he says was rough sex and then shows up at around 10.30 to a Luling hospital, Mandati dying two days later from what was ruled as blunt force trauma to the head. The defense saying in closing that there was no medical evidence to show Mandati was murdered and that the MDMA she took caused bruising and her brain bleed. Now, again, this is now all in the hands of the jury, and we will see if this time they, they could come to a decision. David, Ursula? Erica, since this is a retrial, did the prosecution or even the defense change things up a little bit to avoid another hung jury? There wasn't much change from the defense, but we did notice with the state that they did not put up uh, Kaylee Mandati's ex-boyfriend, Jet Burcham. He was mentioned throughout the trial. He did take the stand the first time, but in this retrial, he did not take the stand. Erica, another change that we noticed was that this time when the defense put their witness up to uh, explain how the there was no medical evidence to prove that Mandati had been killed uh, on purpose, now, this time, the prosecution had more to say about that. Yeah, they were able to put on an expert witness to kind of rebut that witness, which we saw yesterday and we spoke about yesterday. That expert witness was the Bear, Bear County Chief Medical Examiner saying that she herself reviewed the autopsy report and concluded as well that it was blunt force trauma to the head and that the MDMA in her system did not cause her death. And we've seen recently, though, that juries have been having some difficulty with murder case decisions, so they are instead opt for a lesser charge like manslaughter. Is that even possible in this case? So there is two lesser charges that were added. It wasn't manslaughter, though. There is the second degree felony of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon causing serious bodily injury or the third degree felony of criminal negligent homicide. So we will see again what the jury decides if they go with the murder charge or any of the other two charges. It was about 30 minutes that it took for that charge to be read to the jury. So they do have a lot to consider today. David Nursla. All right, Erica, thank you very much. Once again, the jury is in deliberations. Erica Fernandez will be staying by the courthouse all day to uh, see if there's a verdict sometime before the weekend starts. And stay with KSAT 12 and KSAT.com. We will bring you all the latest. Outside with live cam. Man, this is kind of getting repetitive, isn't it? Same old thing. Are we complaining? Hey, we were talking about this mm. yesterday, right? Yeah. Kind of a little mix of sun and clouds, temperatures warming up, a little humid out there. Yes, more of the same is in store as we head into this afternoon. I will say, though, this time yesterday we were dealing with a few isolated pop-up showers here and there on the radar. Most of us are pretty quiet out there right now, but it is definitely warm and muggy. Let's take a look at some of those current conditions outside. 85 already over at SA International, 83 at Stinson, it's 82 over at Kelly, and 84 at Randolph on the east side of Bear County. We've been talking about the humidity this morning. You definitely felt it if you stepped outside for the morning drive, any morning plans, how 
we measure the low level moisture in the atmosphere. Those dew points still in the 60s and 70s, so very noticeable and that's going to stick with us as we head into this afternoon. Already seeing the morning cloud cover break up, scatter out just a little bit more. Some more peaks of sunshine expected into this afternoon. Because of that, though, temperatures are going to climb to once again about 90 degrees, which is somewhat seasonable for this time of year. And then as we head into the evening hours, we'll see those temperatures fall into the low 80s. Now later on this evening, especially out west, just after dinner time, a couple of isolated strong to potentially even severe thunderstorms are possible. Southern Edwards Plateau and then potentially closing in on portions of the hill country later tonight. Again, very isolated with that, but we're not finished with the rain and storm chances, especially into tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. Slightly higher coverage of some scattered rain and storms possible. Still warm and humid this weekend as well. Not a washout by any means, but we'll get you a look at the radar and what we're expecting this weekend coming up in just a few guys. Thank you, Mia. San Antonio police trying to figure out if a suspect accused of sexually assaulting one woman may have struck before. They say they're continuing this investigation following the arrest of that suspect last night. Katrina Weber has more on this case and how the alleged victim was able to fight back. He was a man of no words when news cameras were rolling, but San Antonio police believe 18 year old Tejan Broadus was one of action, most of the criminal kind. He's accused of sexually assaulting an 18 year old woman late Wednesday night at an apartment complex in the medical center on a street called Dartbrook. Police say the woman told them she was working out in the fitness center when she saw Broadus outside struggling with his key card. Then she tried to help him out by letting him in. When she let him in, she turned her back, and that is when the suspect put his arm around her neck, held a knife to her. An arrest affidavit details how he told her not to put up a fight. Told her something to the lines of just let it happen. But police say at one point she did fight back by pushing the suspect off her, then grabbing the knife. The alleged attacker ran away. Through surveillance video, though, investigators say they tracked him down in less than 24 hours. According to jail records, Broadus was arrested around 530 yesterday evening somewhere here in the 7900 block of Fredericksburg Road. Now, we were told they couldn't release the exact location because of concerns about privacy and safety of people in this area. Safety is something police want everyone to keep in mind in the wake of what happened here. The poor victim didn't know that this was going to happen, um, but just for anybody, just be on, be on your guard. According to police, Broadus does Anything not appear to, to have a prior okay. criminal record. Still, Are they're looking into whether there may be other victims. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New at noon, a man accused of stabbing a stranger at a Northwest Side movie theater back in 2021 found guilty of that crime. A jury deliberating uh, that verdict yesterday. Police charged a 24-year-old man, Alexander Andrew, rather Andrew Alexander Pantaleon. He is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Officers say that he stabbed the woman outside of the Palladium movie theater near I-10 and Loop 1604 on the northwest side. But the Leon turned himself into SAPD's central substation 11 days after the crime. And at the time, police said the incident was a random act of violence with no motive. The victim had multiple stab wounds but survived the attack. That punishment phase in the trial now underway. San Antonio fire investigators are trying to figure out what sparked a house fire on the city's west side. Crews were called to the 2900 block of Chihuahua Street just after 11 o'clock last night. That's near Guadalupe and Casterville Road. The blaze was burning inside either a new or remodeled home. And firefighters tell us the fire caused around $30,000 in damage. No injuries were reported. The Texas House impeachment team announcing the two lawyers who are going to be leading the case against Ken Paxton. The two attorneys are Houston-based lawyers Dick DeGarren and Rusty Harden. The people of the state of Texas are entitled to know whether their top cop is a crook. We intend to present these 20 articles of impeachment in a fair way. Both attorneys have both been part of numerous high profile cases. DeGarren was one of the attorneys for Branch Davidian leader David Koresh back in the 1993 Waco standoff. Ken Paxton's trial expected to take place no later than August 28th. 
New jobs report out today and it shows the job market even stronger in May than analysts expected. ABC's Rena Roy explains why that may not be a good thing when it comes to inflation. The monthly jobs report is out from the Department of Labor, showing a robust 339,000 jobs added in May, much more than economists expected. The American job market's resilience has defied expectations since the onset of the pandemic. This report defies expectations. There were a lot of headwinds that the job market had to jump over last month to pull off numbers like these, higher interest rates and stubbornly high inflation. Jobs added in areas like health care, construction and government. Even though this is a robust job market, people are still having a hard time finding the right job. The report also showing the unemployment rate rose to 3.7 percent. Another closely watched number, wages, up 0.3 percent for the month in line with economists' expectations. Higher wages can stoke higher inflation, but experts say the gains in this report are not alarming. This report could keep the Federal Reserve on its current path of raising interest rates, increasing your borrowing costs for a mortgage or your credit card as part of its effort to cool down inflation. President Biden hailed today as a good day for the American economy and American workers and painted it as evidence that the Biden economic plan is working. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. The Denver Nuggets set the tone for the NBA Finals last night, at least for now. Highlights and reaction to coming up in the next half hour. It is National Donut Day. Yeah. <laughs> and while these types of holidays don't usually have deep roots, celebrating this sweet treat started out actually back in World War I. Uh, you can help keep the tradition alive and support the Salvation Army. The weekend is here, and what better way to kick it off than with a free donut? You can get one at HEV today in support of the San Antonio Salvation Army, but you have to make a donation first. It isn't so bad. No. You get a donut. Yeah. Okay, Alyssa Cole is going to tell us how donations for donuts are making a difference in our community. I'm here outside of the Salvation Army Center of Hope Corps because this is one of the many social services your donation will go towards helping local families in need. In celebration of National Donut Day, HEB will donate 2% of all donut sales from now until June 6 to the Salvation Army. It will make an impact on the many services that we provide. The fundraiser benefits the Salvation Army's family shelter, food program, emergency disaster assistance, and other social services. This fundraiser is important for the Salvation Army because they were the originators of National Donut Day from 84 years ago, when the Salvation Army's donut lassies would make and serve donuts for troops during World War I. Roxanne is really in character here. She is a donut lassie today for this occasion. So years later, during the Great Depression, the Salvation Army in Chicago started National Donut Day as a fundraiser to raise funds. They're hoping San Antonio extend their generosity. What we say at the Salvation Army is that it does take an army to get it done. So the purchase of one donut makes a sweet impact for us. So don't forget between now and June 6th, that's Tuesday coming up when you make a purchase at HEB, 2% of that sale will go towards the Salvation Army to help people in need in our area. But for now, reporting downtown, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. That Let's just stand out there some bright sunshine, wasn't she? Yeah, she is. But look at that. Look at that big old cloud. <laughs> we're, uh, we're kind of expecting a little bit of rain here and there for the next few days, right? Yep. At times, we're going to see some passing showers and a couple of thunderstorms. It's not going to be a washout of the weekend. Do not cancel your plans, but plan to keep your case at Weather Authority app handy because, yes, we could see some rumbles out there at times, not just this weekend, but into next week as well. A quick look at the aquifer for this Friday down four tenths of a foot 647.3 good news in the pollen count to wrap up the work week just molds out there and they are low they continue to fall from what we've seen over the past few days so yes a few rain and storm chances this weekend and next week those details after the break
I'm going to go ahead and make some plans for the weekend then. If I don't have to worry about a complete washout, might as well do something outside, right? And get around to that yard work that we've been Ooh. talking about all week long. Yes. Have that in mind. Something hopefully. Else. All, all week. All week. On. That's all we've been missed. Because finally week. we've been able to dry things out a bit. We've yeah. had a pretty active weather pattern around here for the past several weeks, which is why rainfall totals for May were pretty impressive. Drought improvements were found over the past couple of months. Yes, as we head into this weekend and even into next week, settling into more of an active pattern with at least some daily chances to find some isolated rain and storms. So let's get you a look at our weather headlines here today. Warm and muggy. It's going to be mostly dry throughout the afternoon. High near 90 degrees. I think we'll probably hit 90 here in San Antonio. But after dinner time across our far western counties, an isolated strong to potentially even severe thunderstorm or two will be possible. So we're going to need to keep eyes on that this weekend. Still warm and humid. More storm chances, though, pretty isolated each day. Day, so that's why you don't need to cancel your plans, but just know that we could find a few run of the mill pop up fall down showers, isolated thunderstorms, and then especially into Saturday and Sunday night, some slightly higher coverage possible. And then into next week, temperatures a little bit cooler in the mid to upper 80s instead of low 90s, but that's because we are expecting some daily rain and storm chances to continue. So let's talk all about it. Starting off, though, with the look at current conditions outside, you can see on satellite still do have a mixture of sun and clouds in and around San Antonio. Temperatures warming into the 80s for most of us. 85 here in town, 84 in Kennedy. It's 86 out east in Gonzales. Still holding on to the upper 70s though for places like Rock Springs and Del Rio. You can also see that's likely because there's just a touch more cloud cover out there trying to hold those temperatures at bay. Now into this afternoon, approaching 90 degrees here in San Antonio. Partly cloudy skies later this afternoon. And then if you're stepping out for any Friday evening plans, 87 by 7 p.m. 82 by 9. You can see though later tonight we've got an isolated storm chance in the forecast closer to San Antonio, all depending on how those isolated storms out west hold together. But yes, before we can get there, it is going to be a somewhat seasonable afternoon for early June around here. 87 in Fair Oaks Ranch, 90 in Divine, 90 out in Pearsall. Let's walk you through future casts depicting what the radar could look like here as we head into the upcoming coming weekend. So you can see this afternoon pretty dry for most of us, but by to just after dinner time, this is around 8 p.m. across our far western counties, northern Val Verde County, stretching over into Edwards County, some isolated strong to potentially even briefly severe thunderstorms do look to develop off a dry line in West Texas that tracks eastward later on tonight and into the pre dawn hours of our Saturday. They do look to weaken and eventually fizzle out, especially as they approach the I-30 five corridor before the sun comes up tomorrow. Then by wake up time Saturday, just an isolated stray shower possible. Again, most of us miss out on the rain throughout the day, but you can see just a few isolated pop up fall down showers will be possible. Then watch what happens as we head into tomorrow evening. This is 7 p.m. Yet again, eyes turn out west. A complex of thunderstorms is expected to develop. This coverage is expected to be a bit higher than what we'll find out there tonight. Once again, though, weakening as this complex of rain and thunderstorms tracks eastward. A few lingering showers possible by Sunday morning. So overall, yes, a few severe thunderstorms not out of the question. So keep checking back. We'll, of course, get you all the updates on your case that weather authority app and then next week not for everyone each day but those isolated storm chances do look to continue all right mia thank you big weekend on the high school diamond for bernie high schools we've got some highlights to show you and san antonio fc is back on top tough matchup this weekend means they're gonna have their work cut out for them if they want to stay there though Greyhounds have been in a hole before, and they dug one once again last night in the Class 4A State Semis at the Wolf, taking on the defending state champ, Sinton, in Game 1 of the Best of Three Series. Top of the second, Caden McCoy with a runner on third. Boom, their little base hit to right. Braden Brown trots home. Sinton goes up 1-0. Bernie has a great chance to answer in the bottom of the fourth. We've got two outs. We've got bases loaded. Kale Blaylock. That's ball four. That's a walk. So that means a run scores. Next batter. Walker Hill in the box. Ouch. That hurts. Takes his base. Hudson McNew scores. Bernie takes 2-1 lead. Top of the sixth. Base is loaded for Sinton. And how about this fancy double play work? 
Watch this. There's your bases loaded. Here we go. Batter. Grounded to first. Touch the bag. Now you got to tag him at the plate. Got him. Double play. Nice. Bernie had a chance to get out of the jam. Pop up to Brooks Perez in center field. That in that threat. The Greyhounds take the lead in the seventh, but they were unable to close it out, and they dropped game one three to two. All right. In Class 5A, Bernie Champion drops game one to their series. By a final of 9-3, the Chargers will look to keep their season alive tonight at the Wolf, 7 o'clock. And in Class 6A, Johnson drops Game 1 to Westlake, 4-3. The Jaguars will face elimination tomorrow night at Northeast, North, Northeast ISD Sports Park Complex. That should be actually tonight. All right, talk about comeback. San Antonio FC back in the top spot in the Western Conference standings with three wins in their last four matches. So tomorrow night, they're going to face one of their toughest tests. San Antonio is hosting San Diego Loyal SC. Team directly behind them in the standings, and there's plenty of recent history between these two. San Diego split their matchups with San Antonio last year, actually had a better goal differential in those meetings. There is one difference this year. San Diego has elevated Nate Miller from assistant coach to head coach. Regardless, San Antonio expecting a battle at Toyota Field. Nate Miller's a great coach, great tactical brain. Uh, you know, last year and the, the years before, you can see see what he wants his team to do, and they're they're super effective at it. They're a really good team. Like I said, they've got a lot of good players. So, you know, I think every year they've gotten better as a club, you know, from a structure standpoint and from a result standpoint on the field. And, uh, you know, this is probably probably their best year, and, you know, it's, it's going to be a big game on Saturday. So, you know, both teams are going, going for to solidify themselves in second place. So, you know, we'll see if we can do that. Kickoff on the pitch tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, Toyota Field. All right. We also have a way the doctors think that they can reduce breast cancer recurrence by 25%. It involves a treatment that's already available widely. We're going to take a look at the results of that new trial in the next half hour. All right, downtown to Market Square, SA Live. You know, it's, oh, yeah, see, look, donut day. Uh, what well, good night. Wow, that's a lot of donuts they're consuming. There's none left for us. No, of course not. They're ignoring us, too. They are. Another person in the U.S. has died from a fungal infection linked to certain medical procedures in Mexico. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports that a third person has died from a fungal meningitis outbreak and more people could be at risk. Investigators have identified more than 200 U.S. residents who received epidural anesthesia at one of the two clinics this year in Matamoros, that's just across the Texas border. Officials say symptoms including fever and stiff neck could take weeks to develop and then could be mild at first, but quickly become severe and life-threatening. A simple hysterectomy could improve the quality of life for some women with cervical cancer, a new study finds. A late stage trial of women with cervical cancer at low risk of progression found a simple hysterectomy instead of a radical hysterectomy had similar outcomes in keeping them cancer free. Results also showed that patients with the simpler surgery had fewer complications and a better quality of life. Some doctors say the findings in this study could be practice changing. New research showing that a drug already on the market could dramatically reduce the risk of breast cancer recurrence. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has the details on this breakthrough for breast cancer patients. Exciting news for those diagnosed with early stage breast cancer. Breathe and relax. New research reveals the drug ribocyclob, marketed under the name Kiskali, can lower the chances of recurrence for many of those diagnosed at earlier stages of the disease. Women who are hormone receptor positive and HER2 negative make up 70% of the breast cancer population. These patients are generally treated with chemotherapy and endocrine therapy, but the study shows adding this targeted therapy will further reduce the risk that the cancer returns. Women who have this subtype can have recurrences even 20 to 25 years after their initial diagnosis. We found that adding this drug to best available standard therapy will decrease the recurrence rate by as much as 25%. This is big news for patients like 45-year-old mom Suzanne Garner, diagnosed with stage two five years ago. Doctors treated her with chemo and endocrine therapy. I didn't feel great. I felt that my risk of recurrence was still too high. Then she found the Kiskali clinical trial. I have a young daughter who needs her mom around for as long as possible, and I would absolutely do anything to reduce my risk of recurrence so I can be her mom for as long as she needs me. 
That was ABC's Ava Pilgrim reporting. Kiskali is already FDA approved for those with advanced disease. The new data means it could be given to patients, though, even more. Once again, outside with live cam, I guess we're starting to get used to humidity in mid-80s at noon because it seems to be the uh, thing we do it's every day. It's a San Antonio now. thing. It is June. It is June, if you can believe it. So, yes, that is exactly what we're going to be seeing into this afternoon is more heat and humidity and get used to it. Uh, but we do have some isolated storm chances to talk about and even scattered at times, especially as we head into Saturday night and potentially into Sunday night as well. Let's briefly get you a look, though. Yes, current conditions, mid 80s, 85 officially in San Antonio, but feeling a few degrees warmer because we have that humidity in place. Winds out of the southeast at about five to 15 miles per hour and that's going to continue into this afternoon as well. We'll also see the additional sunshine returning temperatures climbing to about 90 here in San Antonio. And really, for the most part, throughout the remainder of the afternoon, we do look to sit on the drier side. Most of us are going to miss out. Nothing out there right now on radar. It's possible we see a very isolated stray shower across our far southeastern counties, but that's about it until after dinner time. Out west, as we see some storms fire up along a dry line, we could see an isolated strong to severe storm or two move into our far western counties. Again, southern Edwards Plateau and then potentially into the the hill country area after dinner and then that activity will continue to push eastward here in San Antonio. We could find the remnants of whatever is left of those isolated storms closer to 10 11 p.m. even midnight as well, but they should be on a generally a weakening trend. So we'll get you a full look at that. Talk a little bit about it. Weekend preview and even an update on the tropics coming up in just a few guys. Thank you, Mia. Now to the latest on that Iowa building collapse. The city of Davenport now says it believes there are three of the missing people were at home when that building collapsed. ABC's Alex Perez with the latest on the search and a new look at the moments just before that building starts to crumble to the ground. Overnight, new surveillance images released of the terrifying moments the Iowa apartment building begins to collapse. Initially, you see a piece of the building fall, then two minutes later, another piece drops. Then a large section of the building crumbles, just two minutes and 43 seconds after the first piece fell. The video stops before the entire collapse is seen. Overnight, officials in Davenport releasing a new missing person poster with a third person, Daniel Prien, who police say, along with Brandon Colvin and Ryan Hitchcock, had a high probability of being home at the time of the collapse. We have families here uh, that are still um, wanting answers and searching for their loved ones. A FEMA urban search and rescue team, including dogs, was at the site working inside, but the mayor says the search of the wreckage is no longer a rescue mission, but a recovery. And now we're learning just days before the collapse, a structural engineer report said the building was in imminent risk of crumbling. Officials never ordered residents to leave. The cause of the collapse still under investigation. The building had a history of complaints and owners had been ordered to make fixes. And the city's chief building inspector has now resigned after giving the repairs being made a pass mark instead of marking them as incomplete. Alex Perez, ABC News, Chicago. 45 bags containing human remains with characteristics matching seven missing call center staff has now been discovered in a ravine in western Mexico. That's according to police who say they were found in a suburb of Guadalajara. Officers say that seven call center employees were reported missing between May 20th and the 22nd. Forensic experts have yet to determine the number of victims and their identities. Law enforcement now working with the families of those missing to identify those remains. In Mexico, disappearances have become an epidemic. More than 100,000 Mexicans and migrants are considered missing. NBA Finals off to an exciting start. The Denver Nuggets are three wins away from making history. Highlights from Game 1 against the Heat coming up.